Hey everyone, welcome back to Ruby Live. My name is Anika and I am your host today. I'm here joined with Liz Mosley for day two of designing your brand catalog. Hey Liz, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. I am really excited. You're going to be working in InDesign with us and I love that. We worked on the chocolate packaging and branding yesterday in Illustrator, which was really fun. Are you excited to jump into InDesign today? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to InDesign. InDesign is my secret favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by InDesign. So this is a very fun stream. But before we dive into it, if you missed the previous stream, you can view the replay both on Behance and YouTube. Check out photographer Elena as she takes you through her fine art series and uses her photography skills along with her fine art skills. It's It was very good stream. Make sure to watch the replay. And if you miss the Illustrator Creative Challenges, we stream every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. This week, we have Claudie from Print My Soul um, teaching us a new prompt every single day. So make sure to tune into that. Learn everything new every single day and put your work in the Discord for feedback from our lovely mentors. And um, there is a live chat. So if you're watching anywhere, both on Behance and YouTube, you can comment, say hi, ask questions from Liz, learn from a creative workflow, or just hang out with our creative community. I want to say hi to everyone before I hand it over to you, Liz. Um, people are really excited. We have Arshad in the chat, Wade, Val, Liz, Muhammad. Hi, welcome on everybody. Let me know where you're joining us from today and what time is it over there? Um, Liz, would you like to reintroduce yourself for folks who did not join us on day one? Tell us a little bit about your work and get started. Give us a quick recap of day one and then get started into day two. Yeah, sure. So my name's Liz. I am a graphic designer based in the UK. I'm in Cardiff in Wales. Um, and I work mainly with small businesses, uh, doing branding stuff for them. But I also have a podcast called Building Your Brand and just like doing lots of other different things as well on the side. Um, yeah. And so let's dive in and I'll just do a little recap of what we did yesterday and then we'll carry on with day two. So I created branding for a fictional chocolate company called Boca Choc, and it was all about, or it is all about creative flavors, lots of different, um, yeah, lots of different interesting flavors. It was all about being like innovative and bold. Um, and so we chatted through their brand values, who the target audience was, um, looked at some other chocolate bars in the same kind of like, um, like positioned in the same kind of area, had a, um, this was the mood board that I created and then we we went pretty bold with the color palette and made it quite varied so that it could be like used for all different um, like the different flavors that they could have their own sort of unique color palettes and then we went over into working on the logo and we worked on a few different concepts based on some sketches that I'd done um, so these are some of the like the workouts that we've done since yesterday I just saved this one in all the different colors so that I could put it into my library and I've made my library nice and organized so I've got my logos here you can make little subfolders so I've put everything into folders and it's making me very that. happy yeah that um, that organization is something else I know I'm not usually that good at it but I'm <laughs> I am really enjoying it so I've got all my colors saved here um all my logos I've got the monogram saved and I've got the patterns that I made saved but yeah so we did these like three different concepts this one was the clear winner and was my favorite as well yeah so that's what we went with and then we went over and created some patterns for the different flavors so secret secret art boards I love that yeah on the secret <laughs> I know I put them too far apart it's a bit annoying but anyway on the secret art boards um so here are the patterns that we created so having some like hand drawn elements that I did in Adobe Fresco inspired mm -hmm. by the flavors just to contrast the bold um you know sans serif font and I uh, since yesterday I just created one more so that we had um some more packaging that we could play around with and then if I just whiz over to the packaging experiments um Ooh. so I've just got put them here like the three of them here so these are three that I've taken that I've created mm -hmm. sorry for three different flavors just to show how you know like all the different colors can work in different ways and then basically uh, this sort of blobby section is in whatever type of chocolate it is. So this is the dark chocolate, the white chocolate yeah. and the milk chocolate. And then it has their, its corresponding pattern 
um, and the basic information that you need. So to start for day two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mock these up before we jump into InDesign um, using Photoshop because I wanna have some really nice images that I can use in my like product catalog um, yeah. because the whole point of the product catalog is to like sell the product to people. Mm -hmm. So I want it to yeah. look really good. So what I, I love did- that. This is like a great insight into your workflow because you're essentially just thinking about what the layout is going to be and what the copy information is going to be. But I mean, you, ideally, photographs are usually provided to you by the client. But in this yeah. case, you're making it yourself. So I feel like this is a great way to learn um, the whole process. So I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. So I downloaded some chocolate mock-ups from um, Adobe Stock. And mm -hmm. so that's what I'm going to be using. So if I just, let me just make this, I'm just going to minimize my illustrator and make this nice and big so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. And then I've saved my three different packaging designs just here as JPEGs. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to get my layers up and I'm going to find the bits. So what I love about these like smart mockups is it just makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, so I've got here, basically this is like where you put your artwork. So I'm just going to grab one of my designs and I'm just going to drag it over. Oh no, I've done the wrong thing. I just need to get right tool there we go there we go we did it yeah um in the chat let me know if you guys use mockups and if you've ever used the free adobe stock template there's tons and tons of templates that adobe stock provides so um i love that you've used like the chocolate chocolate mockup template from adobe stock yes there's right. so the right many good <laughs> mockups i'm a bit of a mockup you know how we were talking about how we were obsessed mock -up holder. Yeah. i'm also a mockup obsessed <laughs> I've got an epic mock-up folder now. Um, yeah, I feel like at this point I have so many mock-ups that I don't even look at them and I just like get new ones whenever yes. I'm doing something or even make your own mock-ups. If you know like 3D apps, um, if you know the substance tools, um, you can essentially create your own mock-ups, which I sometimes do as well. So that's fine. Do you ever Sorry. create your own mock-ups? I don't, but I was looking at it the other day and it's actually easier than I expected like to make the... Yeah you know like to make the smart layers and everything so i think i am mm -hmm. going to give it a go nice yeah a friend I think... of mine who oh sorry a friend of mine who's a photographer started making mm -hmm. some really beautiful ones um and yeah she just they they look so good absolutely yeah good photographs take your ipad I mean, that's like the basic mock-up anyone could start with. If you ever want to make your own, just take your iPad or your phone and put it towards the camera. Click a good photograph with like no natural light coming in, just one light source so that you can edit it easily. And um, then just like cut that piece out and make it a smart object. And there you go. And obviously add shadows and highlights. Of course, all that's there. Yeah. It's not as easy as I say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alana is back for day two. Hey, Alana, welcome. Alana says, I love mock-ups, saves me massive headaches. Um, shout out to everyone creating those resources. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Adobe Stock. Oh. Love it. So are you changing like the colors of the sides as well? Yeah, so I'm just changing the... Um, oh, that's the background. I'm not changing... That's, I'm clicking on the wrong bits at the moment. This is what I need. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just changing the... I'm just using the... Um, eyedropper tool to just make sure that the sides match um okay. with the chocolate bar i mean there's all sorts of different mock-ups so yeah there's it sort of depends on what you need i'm just going to change the background to maybe like a just quite like neutral so that the um packaging really stands out so what i'm going to do is save this as a jpeg yeah Let's do it. We're doing it. Wait, have you already created one mock-up? Is that what you're telling me? Because <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've done one already. And we're going to do one more mm -hmm. um, with a different with a different mock-up. So um, do you create like these kind of catalogs a lot with your clients? Is that something that you do on a daily basis? 
Not on a daily basis, no, but I have done them for my, I used to have a stationery shop. So I have Mm -hmm. um, done them for myself before for my own business. Um, Nice. So um, when you do these for clients, do they provide like the copy information? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I love that. Let me yeah, Debbie find... in the chat says, hi, where can I find the mock-ups? I think Debbie, um, Val in the chat just actually put up a link so you can find those there. Um, there's like a templates folder. Um, I don't know, Liz, can we go to Adobe Stock and show how people can get mock-ups? Yeah, sure. So I literally just searched chocolate, cho- oh, I can't spell now, chocolate bar mock-up. Mm-hmm. And then I put PSD because I wanted it to be um, like a smart file. So you can see here like ones that I've already downloaded. Yeah. But yeah, there's loads of them. There's there's lots of different options. But there's also, um, I mean, obviously this is just specific for this pro- uh, pro- project, but there's like mock-ups for everything. So you could put in iPhone mock-up mm-hmm. and you'd get loads of options for that. So yeah, there's, there's yeah. like you could spend a long time looking for really nice mock-ups on here yeah absolutely yeah there you go that's how we can find mock-ups i hope that answers that question debbie um thank you for asking okay so i'm just gonna Ooh, i really you. love this one because it has like chocolate things on the side i know yeah <laughs> i'm hoping that it's gonna let me um edit those as well I think you can probably add like a solid color layer and change like a blend mode on top, something. Yeah. Mess around with like curves of the layer and then it should work. I love that lighter beige, beige orange tone. I don't know mm. what to call it. What is that color? Wait, this one or this one? The one on top uh, on the background. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it's just orange, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Overcomplicated things. Um, love that. Yeah. So, would you say you provide like a mock up, uh, mocked up product to your client at the first stage of like, let's say there are like a couple of iterations for your logo design, and then you're presenting the concept to the client? Would you say that you do a lot of mocking up your products as well in that yeah. case? Yeah, absolutely. So, this is a lesson that I learned a while ago, which is that, um, I find that presenting like my designs to client always goes so much better if I include mock-ups because I think it just like sometimes when you just see like a logo it's hard to imagine like how that Mm -hmm. will play out for a full brand and so I think Mm -hmm. just basically mocking up as much as possible um ah here we go so what I'm going to see if I can do is if I go to libraries. Well, Actually, no, help I'm... me out saying it's hazelnut orange. Yeah, it is hazelnut orange. Hazelnut orange, nice. <laughs> what I'm gonna that do... actually reminds me. Um, do you ever name your colors as well to make them more fun? Um... <gasps> you know what? I don't, but I totally should. That... Do you do that for your client presentations? I do do that. Yeah. Oh, um... I love that. So um, it actually makes it more fun and depending on like the brand personality I use the brand values um, and incorporate that in the design as well and kind of like since this is chocolate I would probably use like this monogram B um, as like the color itself and then name it something else so like is not <gasps> orange or not just have like a circular ellipse shape with the color but like a monogram or something which is an element of your pattern for instance nice um that as like the color color itself i'm so excited about this <laughs> oh <laughs> that looks so cool yeah isn't it cool <laughs> it does look cool um oh, i love that i want to make this i want this i want this chocolate brand to become a reality <laughs> now <laughs> right hang well, on, which one haven't i done um, who knows who knows yeah. we're getting prototypes <laughs> chat do we want prototypes i want prototypes so do you ever print out like uh, since this is a passion project I know but would you do you think that maybe in the future you can print out like this die line and maybe photograph it just for like presenting in your portfolio yeah definitely that would be really cool I feel like I yeah. used to do a lot more of that early on in my career and I haven't done as much of it recently I think partly because mock-ups 
look so good now um <laughs> yeah like i remember when i f- first started making mock-ups mm-hmm. some of the some of them looked pretty sketchy <laughs> um okay so that we don't so that we've got enough time i'm just gonna save that one now Mm -hmm. um i love it yeah wait to always name your layers and your colors yeah i love that (laughs) i really need to be more organized (laughs) no i mean as long as you know where things are and you don't have to send your files off to a client or someone else working in the team i guess it's fine you know I guess you're like. I guess, I guess that's fine. <laughs> you don't sound very. Sure I'm not exactly hundred percent on board with the idea of not naming my layers, but um, yeah. I'm just going to quickly turn this image around because it looks like it's upside down. Love it. I love that. I the that's is... better. Except oh, for the hey, piece yeah. Down, I think that's better. Anyway, okay, perfect. You can move Sorry. move the chocolate things upside down as well, can't you? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'll leave it's it for more now. Complicated. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I totally <laughs> could. Right, let's jump into InDesign. Let's so, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna. There is like so many crazy things that you can do in InDesign, but what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be quite. I'm gonna start like go with the basics. So, if you're new to InDesign, you don't need mm-hmm. to feel overwhelmed. You'll be able to follow along with this, yeah. um, and it'll give you like the basics um, of what to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I, so this might be different. In, I think this is different in different countries, but I'm basically gonna do my um, catalog A5. Um, mm-hmm. So it's gonna be like a little brochure. I'm, because of the like designs I've done for the chocolate bars are like landscape. I'm gonna make it A5 landscape, which yeah. Um, yeah, I'll explain a bit about that in a second. So I've put, it's gonna be 12 pages. So I've put in 12 pages. Um, You can like set a lot of the stuff right from the start. So I want it to be facing pages. I'm going to put in three columns because I know that Mm -hmm. that's what I need. And then I'm going to, because we're going to be printing this or I'm going to be showing you how to prepare this for print. We're going to put in some bleed. So the standard, again, this like might change country to country, but I think the standard is three mil. Um, Mm -hmm. With all of this sort of like print setup as well, you can always check with your printer um, because they will like give you the specs that they want yeah um, so. so the dimensions basically the units of measurement will differ depending on what country you're in and also the sizing because yeah. some people use letter size some people use a4 um, exactly. in this case we're using a5 so yeah so we're using yeah. we in the uk we use a sizes i know in like in america they've got letter size yeah. and yeah. stuff like that so mm. great okay so what i'm gonna start off with is saving my file <laughs> always a good place to start <laughs> i love that yes save your work friends <laughs> love it yeah le- let us know in the chat if you guys have ever used indesign or have any questions regarding indesign um if you have any basics that you always are afraid of or like if you said any um parent pages in indesign ever yeah so know. that's what we're gonna start off with so we're gonna set up our they've changed i used to call them i'm used to calling them master pages but uh, they have yeah. changed it yeah parent pages yeah. Mm-hmm. so what i am gonna do is i want to set the um cream color from our branding as the background so i'm just gonna create a box i'm gonna sort of get, basically put in all of the elements that are going to be the same on every page um so I've got my columns already set up which is great so I've got my background color now the next thing that I'm going to sort out is my page numbers it's not a super long document so page numbers aren't vital but I think it's generally a good thing to be able to do so I'm just going to I I if anyone was watching yesterday I did the like designer faux pas of forgetting what fonts I've used, but I've written them down now, so I know what I'm looking for. <laughs> so I'm going for this. Love it, yeah. Um, Martha's from YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think Val answered your question, but if you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'm just gonna nip back into um, Illustrator because I want to get. Do you remember we used this shape to create mm-hmm. the the bite shape, out, yeah. the bite shape. I am going to use the bite shape 
for my page numbers. So I'm basically going to put it in the corner so that it looks like a bite has been taken out. Well, it's not going to look like a bite because it's going to be all colorful, but so that it gives that kind of look. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's a nice way to put like a branding element and make like a visual. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I'd love to hear from people in the chat, like what they've used InDesign for, if they like mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us know, Chad. What do you use it for? I use it mostly for like presentation decks, be it like mm -hmm. making brand guidelines or making like a layout for like, maybe it's a pitch that I want to make for a potential client, all of that. I just use InDesign most of the time. Yeah, nice. Val says, I think the greatest part about the free section of Adobe Stock, aside from there being so many things to choose from, is the quality. Yeah, I agree 100%. I feel like there is a lot of good quality stuff, like tens and thousands of quality products. And that's why I can just look at it all day and like, maybe I want this. Maybe I want this. Maybe I want all of it. <laughs> So are you decide what is what is your deciding factor for these colors? Are you deciding it with like the flavor or the product? How's your thought process working like here? So at the moment, I am just going to put any colors in because I think probably what I'll do eventually is maybe have a different color on each page. But because mm -hmm. um because it's like the master, I'm just yeah. setting it up with any color. What you can do is you can actually like override master um elements on the pages so I'll show you how to do that in a minute and then it just means that they're already there but you can edit them but so I'm just going to set these page numbers so that they go automatically um mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is go to type okay. go to insert special character yeah. and then go to current page number and I'm just going to do that for this one as well Love it. Yeah. Um, why did you do that? Is that because it'll automatically change it when you apply like the page? Yeah. To... So if you see the pages now, you'll see mm -hmm. under here, they've got the page that like the numbers. So now if I go yeah. into there, you'll see it's automatically one, two, three. So I don't have to manually put the page numbers in. It's mm -hmm. done it for me automatically. But something that is quite handy to also do is I don't actually want it to start numbering one from the front cover because this is going to be my front cover, right? Yeah. Um, I want it to start numbering number one from this page here. So if, mm -hmm. I, if you click control and click on that and then go to numbering and section options, yeah. I am going to start page numbering at one here. So I'm going to mm -hmm. click OK. I'm just going to ignore that uh, warning so you'll see now it says one two and then um it now starts so these i'm gonna get rid of in a minute because i don't yeah. need them but it now starts from one there mm -hmm. um nice. so on, on the um one thing to mention if people aren't like super familiar with sending things to print is the number of pages you has need have needs to be divisible by four so i've got 12 mm -hmm. pages so now that it looks like 10 is my last page but then i've got my front cover and my inside front cover as one and two so there's 12 pages yeah. here so that will yeah. work perfectly now if you if i click on this um front cover page and mm -hmm. you control click again um you will see there's override all parent page elements and so now i can just delete those because i don't need them I mean, or alternatively, I could just set up a, another, you can set up as many par parent pages as you want. Yeah. Um, so I could potentially set up lots of different, ooh, lots of different parent um, page options. Mm -hmm. But because this is quite a small document, I'm not going to do that. But um, right, I'm just going to delete this. So now I'm going to start thinking... Hang on, I've just uh, slightly, let me just, I've messed it up with the overriding. I'm going to leave that there for now and then yeah. we'll sort that we out We can come back to it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've done a little sort of, I love to do little thumbnail sketches. So I've done, mm -hmm. let me just see if I can find it. I've done a little thumbnail sketch of sort of like roughly what my page layer. I mean, it is like so rough, but you know, this is going to yeah. be my front cover. I've got my about page, my brand values. Mm -hmm. 
there's going to be information about the product like one thing mm. that I think is nice to think about is the flow like so obviously as I mentioned this is like a really short document so it's not too big yeah. a deal but if you've got a yeah. larger document you want to th think about the flow like you don't want to have loads of dense pages of text so it's nice to like break it up with like a full page image um mm. I've got like some smaller images in here because obviously it's going to be like listing products which is a bit you know boring so I want to make sure that there's lots of images because ultimately I want people to buy these products um so yeah. I want them to be able to see as much as possible so we'll start off I'm going to start off with the cover um so I'm it. going to I, I would think... always be intimidated by like a blank cover um in your sketches I looked at it and I'm like oh, I know it's so blank <laughs> what's gonna be on the cover <laughs> that's a good point I didn't go into much detail um so I got some stock images of chocolate mm -hmm. and I really like the idea of um I've got some there's all sorts here but I think there's I'm gonna go with this one so quite like um plain and simple and then I'm but then I'm gonna have like the bright colors of the um like logo on top which i think is gonna look really Ooh. good yeah that's a brilliant idea i love it yeah um i remember you putting up a poll on your instagram with like the name of the branding mm -hmm. um and i chose boca chalk just because i felt like not a lot of people would be able to tell what boca is mm -hmm. on itself and i love that the fact that you have like a chocolate uh, image right there which basically reassures you that it is chocolate <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know it's just how you look at like things first and read read stuff on it later so you look at it visually first and that registers first in your brain yeah yeah absolutely love it oh is this like the tagline that you're talking yeah, about yeah this is the tagline so I'm just gonna put this in mm -hmm. um love that yeah we're about um a half an hour into the stream uh so thank you all for joining if you're joining both on behance and youtube if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the chat we do have at the 90 minute mark we do have an artist spotlight um today so make sure to uh put in your artist spotlight recommendations for any future artist spotlights yeah there's so many amazing people on Behance. i can't wait to have a look at the spotlight Absolutely. yeah Okay. I'm just going to try and move this um, sort of which bit of the chocolate over so that it's not too distracting behind the text. And then the other thing that I wanted to do is so you know how on the packaging I've got this little circle so I'm going to bring mm -hmm. that little element in. And I'm going to yeah. make a bright colored circle that's going to go here in the middle because I'm just really loving the contrast of like the chocolate images, but also then with all the bright colors. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. Um, we have a question here from Oliver from YouTube. Thank you, Oliver, for your question. They want to know, how do you think about the layout strategically enough for like someone to look at look at it and want to turn to the next page what what are the essential elements in that scenario do you think about how old the target audience is or um how do you go about that process i think i think about um and we'll sort of like go into this a bit more you know like i think it's like when you think about hierarchy like what's the most mm -hmm. important information and it's effectively yeah. like communicating the information as like as successfully as possible um yeah. so I think it's 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 breaking things up you know like if you think about how when you create anything you're thinking about how you can capture someone's attention and how you can keep their attention so you, mm -hmm. like unless you're reading like a novel if you've got pages and pages of like dense very sort of boring looking copy it's not going to yeah. draw people in so like one mm -hmm. of the things I've been thinking about one of the things I've got it we'll have a look at the text in a minute I, I found some like facts about chocolate because I thought it might be fun to like put in you know like in magazines you get like pull out quotes which that's a yeah. really good mechanism for like drawing people in mm -hmm. um I love it. Yeah, that's actually a good point with like the copy and the um, text 
next to each other i feel like that really works yeah love that can we zoom in a little on the page you're working on yeah cool. love that okay thank you i always i always need that no worries <laughs> oh yeah it's always good to remain zoomed out but um sometimes maybe zooming in works <laughs> yeah no it's good love it so how do you how are you deciding like the fonts are these the same ones you used yesterday yeah these are the same ones i used yesterday so basically mm-hmm. i'm going to limit myself to um the font from the logo for the headers and then yeah. i've got this iskra font which is going to be for all the body copy um which mm-hmm. i think works like nicely with it i yeah. usually don't use like the lo- the font that i've used in the logo for the like headers but mm-hmm. i I think I'm going to try it today. I think it could work quite well. Um So yeah, we'll see. I think it could be good. I'm just going to reduce the spacing here between the lines and yep. then I'm going to change the color of it. Oh. I need to save these into my swatches so that I can um Yeah, right. so I think at this stage, I'm just sort of going to play, 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 you know, I like to sort of play around. I think, mm-hmm. um, you know, it can be good to do, I, you know, could have sort of done a, lot, a whole bunch of like different um, thumbnails for how the layout could look. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. How did you make the grid disappear? Did you just press W on the keyboard? Is that um, it? Yes, like so you can do like a preview. Yeah, so just mm-hmm. W, and then it yep. just means that you can see it without all the extra things mm-hmm. that are going on. I might yeah, just... it's kind of like going into outline mode in Illustrator, and you're like, let's mm-hmm. just see how it looks with the outlines. <laughs> I always, I always forget that you can do that in Illustrator, though. That I always, <laughs> I need to do that more. That's so handy. Yeah, but it's like something that I don't like instinctively do, whereas I know lots of other people do use that all the time. Mm-hmm. I think I want to make this the I feel like we all have our creative process so I, I mean know. whatever works for you works for you and if you're more efficient doing that then good on you. <laughs> okay, nice. Great. So, I've got um a document down here that's got all of my text in so the next page is going to be a bit about um Boca Chalk. so I'm mm-hmm. going to work on that that's going to be the inside front cover um yeah. I'm going to just copy and paste each page as I need it because I don't um so I want the text to th- flow through the text boxes but I don't want mm-hmm. it to flow through the whole document I want to limit it to each page um it again like depending on like how big a document you've got will depend yeah. on how you sort of want to bring the text in. Um, so Love it. Going... I know we were talking about text and like laying out earlier. Um, do you have any tips specifically for how to break up text and avoid putting too much content in a layout? Um, I think things like, you know, images, pull out quotes, you know, like making your headings look different stuff like that I think works well um so what yeah I think that that really helps what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this as a solid color for the background but I also want to bring in I'm hoping that I can fit it in to these two columns so I'm using a three column grid like you could um you could make it more complicated I mean you could like there's whole books just on grids right you could make it super complicated you could use I'm use the baseline grid all that kind of thing but I'm going to keep it quite simple today um I love it yeah Um, I'm glad you mentioned oh (laughs) <laughs> no, we won't be scared, I'm sure. Um, but I love that you mentioned the books here, um, which actually reminds me to a very interesting question. Do you have any books that inspire you or that helped you when you were first starting out? And um, yeah, tell us, how did you how did you find out about the grid system and what works for you in the layout? I had a, I've got a book that's just about grids. Oh, I think <laughs> I like know what such you're talking a nerdy. About. Is it like um, a red colored grid systems? Yeah, that's the one. 
I'm just going to um, go into styles and you can set up character styles and paragraph styles to save Mm -hmm. yourself time. Um, So I'm just going to set up a basic paragraph style um, and I'm just going to get my Iskra and I'm going to go for regular and I'm going to make it 10 point. I think it's always tricky with... um, yeah working out what sort of you don't want your text to be too small but at the same time yeah. you don't want it to be um like massive either <laughs> I mean bits of it can be massive but you don't want like your body copy to be huge too small or too big yeah, yeah exactly finding the right balance yeah and um I think to add on to what you mentioned about like text and to putting, avoid putting too much content. I mean, looking at existing products that do the same thing that you want to do and looking at a lot of them really kind of gives you an insight into other people's process as well and Mm -hmm. what they thought about. If you continue to look at it for a longer duration, you will probably be able to design something intuitively, but um, definitely not copying that style um, and just like finding your own voice is also important. So just get an idea of how things work and then make it work for your own product or brand. Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good tip. I think I'm um, like a really good thing to do is like, just as you go about day to day life is if you see mm-hmm. designs that you like to sort of yeah. almost like have a folder and just like, like a physical, you know, like physical, if you see a flyer that you like, you know, pick it up and yeah. save it, like have a sort yeah. of inspiration file and you can do that online as well. Yeah. I started doing that with like packaging. So I used to like unfold the packaging. Maybe it's like a cosmetic packaging. You unfold that and like stick it in a scrapbook and just look at dye lines. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, pull things apart. See how they're Yeah, see how they're working. I love it. What are your, um, what I haven't answered your inspiring books. One of the books that inspired me the most when I was, Mm -hmm. and I think it's still in print now is how to be a graphic designer without losing your soul. Like that's a really good Mm -hmm. like handbook um, for being a graphic designer. I also, this is not like necessarily, well, it is design related, but I am a big Jessica Hish fan and her book, Mm -hmm. which is, I'm just looking, it's called In Progress. Um, I absolutely love because you, you know, like she has all her sketches in there and she shows Mm -hmm. you like her thinking with everything. Like you, you can sort of see her creative process with the projects and it's just, yeah, it's really good. I love it. Yeah, I love the logo design Love by David Airy. I think that that's oh, a really good book. Nice. Um, I also like Lisa Congdon. She has yes, like very fun. Her. Yeah, I love her. I love her style and like just um, whatever she does, essentially. <laughs> I love yeah. her books. And her art, I was listening to a talk the other day, which was really inspiring. So yeah, I love her books. I think, I think she's... This is a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I yeah. was just going to say, I think she's a really great person mm-hmm. um, to yeah. follow, like as a freelancer. Like she's just exactly. so generous yeah. with the content that she shares about yeah. um, like working as a creative, like the struggles, mm-hmm. all that kind of thing. I just realized that there's a black outline on my box, which I don't want um so I'm just that's gonna... actually what i was saying um the freelance i think it's called art inc that's the book that i was referring to and it does have lisa congan um and a lot of other creators who actually are in the industry and if you're just starting out um it's a great read because it kind of gives you an insight and you're like oh i was doing this and maybe this is the right way of doing it <laughs> that's actually how i felt when i was first reading it and I'm like hmm, yeah i relate to that <laughs> how is this so true <laughs> yeah Okay, Alana so agrees with us. Alana says, oh my God, Lisa Congdon has great books. Also a huge Jessica Hirsch fan. Nice. Yeah. Love One it. of my um, dreams, mm-hmm. I'm just going to speak this out in case anyone knows, <laughs> is to have um, Jessica Hirsch on my podcast. That's my like, ultimate Ooh. goal. <laughs> yeah, manifest it. Into I know, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean believing that you can do it and also then putting the hard work into it um, yeah. really makes things happen. I mean, I'm not kidding when I say that. <laughs> you got to work <laughs> really hard for it, but it does sometimes happen. Have you got examples of that in your career? Like, Well, I did want to work with like 
um, a business owner based out of the UK and that wasn't happening because of like logistical issues and I really cared about their values and how they work and then it finally happened. Oh, so amazing. Fun. Yeah. That's fun that you've got um, international clients. Yeah, it's always, um, I love time zones. I'm a big time zone fan. So it's always fun to like <laughs> work with everyone and make it work still. I hate time zones. I find them so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> they hurt my brain. So I'm going to put my brand values in here, which I had mm -hmm. in the document yesterday. So I'm just sort of like setting the page up. <laughs> Um, so are you gonna um, put in text into these boxes or these yeah, boxes I'm gonna... are different colors? I don't know. So I they're gonna be questions. yeah, they're gonna be different colors. I'm basically just throwing. I I mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying the fact that it's such a big uh, color palette. So I'm basically yeah. just throwing color at the pages and just mm -hmm. um, having some fun with it because I think I want yeah I want people to sort of feel really like happy and bright when they look yeah. at this catalog. Mm -hmm. um, and really inspired so that is what i am doing so i'm Love just gonna it. put some text boxes in here yeah let's see okay i was just looking in the chat if there are any questions yeah let me know chat if you have any more questions happy to ask liz about it yeah ask me some questions i love i love chatting to people about everything <laughs> that's why i love having a podcast because i just love chatting to people i think people are so interesting and everyone's yeah, like so hey. what kind of what kind of questions do you think you ask um like your guests on the podcast so that they can help like new business owners or also maybe designers are in the creative community how did you come um, up with that i well yeah i usually have i don't act, i don't ever have like a set um number of mm -hmm. like not number a set sort of like questions mm -hmm. that i ask yeah um, yeah. It usually depends on like what I know of them or like what their industry is. Um, mm -hmm. Usually there's like a particular topic that I want to pick their brain about. Um, yeah. So like we were chatting yesterday about how I just recorded with a lawyer, but I've also recorded mm -hmm. with like email marketing experts or like Pinterest experts. I usually like try and get people in where it's something that I want to learn more about. And then I get to like yeah. ask them loads of questions, which is really nice. Oh yeah, and that way you also build like a personal relationship and it's more authentic to the process because mm -hmm. you're ideally curious about it and yeah, that you don't need to think about all of those questions. Yeah, I love that. So no, do you I'm... include all of these categories and like sections in every presentation or does that also vary from each project you're working on? What do you mean presentation, like a brand presentation? Um, yeah, so this is essentially a product catalog, but what if this was a brand guidelines um deck would you include like brand values colors yes, typography yeah. yeah i would if this was like a if this was for a like brand guidelines then mm -hmm. i would include um so i'm just just increasing the space here between the heading and the um yeah. text below and you'll see now that it's like flowed over into the next box but i'm just gonna so i just sort that out um, yeah, I would definitely include all of those things so that, you know, if anyone else is working on the branding, then they get like mm -hmm. a real sense of what the business is about. So not just the, um, not just the designs, yeah. but a bit of everything. So one of the things that I love in InDesign is that, you know, like the pipette tool or the eyedropper tool, you can use it for colors, but you can also use it for type as well. So, mm -hmm. um, like any styling that you've done on type, you can just um like puppet it and copy it um nice. which are you really clicking nice. option and um doing it uh so you just highlight the bit of text so mm -hmm. you just highlight the bit of text that you want to change and then you literally just pick the eyedropper tool and then just eye drop another bit of text that has the styling that you want mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so yeah now i just need to sort of fix my text boxes because the text is like flowing through um but yeah, so. No, wait. How is that in one click? How did you do that in one click? I'm sorry. I'm just nitpicking all parts of the process. No, it's fine. <laughs> I it was just I just got rid of the space, the spacing, mm -hmm. so that it just like flowed through. Okay. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the color to the brown, rather than have a black. 
Love it. Debbie is tuning in from Berlin. It's 9.41 p.m. Well, it's late. Thank you for being here, Debbie. Yeah, it's, Appreciate it's that. Yeah. late here. <laughs> it's going to start going it? dark. It is 8.45 here. Mm. Well, it's, so it's not that late, but it's like not the middle of the day. It's later. Yeah, <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so, watch, so another thing, like talking about breaking up the pages, like I've got a solid color page mm-hmm. here and then I've got one with the cream background here so I'm gonna yeah. sort of like um yeah break break it up like that so and I think having like these colored boxes like draws the eye in you know like gives breaks the copy down for people to read mm-hmm. um I'd love to know what people think it's how it's looking so far anything people would change like one thing to think about is like keeping certain elements like consistent so you can bring in guides um like to make sure that your like headers are always in the same place um like obviously you've got the grids as well which help with that one of the things I would say with grids is that it's like they're really really helpful but also you can totally break the rules as well I think with a lot of design things it's like good to know the rules but then it's also good eventually like to have the confidence to break the rules as well absolutely yeah know them and then break them later I love that uh, yeah, let us know, Chad. What do you think of this? And um, if you have anything that you would do or would like us to demonstrate um, in this presentation or catalog. Why do I keep saying presentation? <laughs> no, it's fine. So I am going to do a page which has got... Inf- so there's sort of some basic information that you need mm-hmm. in a wholesale catalog. So one of the... Um, So I've done sort of like a bit of an intro to the brand. Um, I'm going to put in, actually, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put in a picture of me um, Mm. because I've written in the blurb that I'm setting up this chocolate brand. So it's like a founder story kind of thing. Um, Uh So I think it's always good. Like if anyone runs a small business, it is always good to let people get to know you, I think. Um, so if your that, image yeah. comes in like that, you can just go object fitting and then you can just fill frame proportionally mm-hmm. um, and it's going to set your image to the frame, but I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. But um, yeah, so I think it's always good to like be visible in your business if you, if like that's appropriate and you feel comfortable with that. Um, yeah. But I think people really like relate well to um, seeing who's behind the business. Like that definitely makes me feel... Um, more loyal to like a business if I know about the person the story of the person who like founded it I think I don't know about you does that influence whether you support a business it does influence personality really matters when you're working with someone um, or even buying their products because I mean if their values don't match with what you believe in sometimes it does play into how you look at the product or the product messaging or the brand messaging yeah totally yeah and, the, and I think one of the interesting things is like not every business is going to be for everything. So uh, this is something that actually like for everybody, sorry. This is one of the things that gets talked about a lot on the podcast is this mm-hmm. idea that um, like not only do we want to attract the right people to our business, but we also yeah. want to like repel certain people um, yeah. because not everybody is going to be the right fit for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think that's always a good thing to remember as well yeah definitely I think this all comes with like research and like finding who your target audience is Mm -hmm. and these bases are covered while doing that so when you're working with clients do you also do like take a couple of weeks for research with like the competitors and all of that or do the clients provide that information uh like with the with the clients that I work with because they're quite small they've like Mm -hmm. usually done a lot of that beforehand yeah um but sometimes or like they've worked with someone else you know like to really get their like messaging clear and Mm -hmm. get really clear on what they're all about or like a lot of people work with like coaches or mentors and stuff like that so I don't Mm -hmm. do it that much um but yeah I think it's really like important yeah aspect of it absolutely So like, I'm just thinking of like, so with, um, I'm going to put in the information about ordering and shipping and obviously like the most important thing, almost like if you think of it like a website, like what is the call to action and the call to action, oh, 
that was weird the call to action is going to be for them to go to this website so although I'm making mm-hmm. like a printed physical catalog yeah. Yeah. um the way things are now like then like so in the olden days there'd be like a bit of paper at the back and you'd literally like write down you know like you tick which products you wanted and like write yeah. down the numbers and everything of what you want yeah. whereas now it's much more likely that they're going to go to a website that's like a designated wholesale website um mm-hmm. and they're going to order yeah like the product that they want from there so my call to action is going to be for them to go to the website to order so i'm just going I love to that. like that actually brings me to a very my next question <laughs> <laughs> um so with like the pandemic and everything happening in the world we started seeing the um qr code coming back because of the yeah. fact that everyone started being online so do you think that you would include something like that in this or like a product catalog in general at the end hey scan this qr code and that will just redirect you to the website So I probably wouldn't because I feel like ordering a wholesale order on your phone might be a bit tricky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I well, I think actually, no, I would. I would include it because I think that then it just makes it like it gives you the option, doesn't it? Um, yeah. I think that's such a brilliant idea. I hadn't thought of that um, to include that. But yeah, I think that's a really great idea. It is so funny. I feel like the QR code, yeah, the the QR code had sort of like <laughs> died, hadn't it? And then the, the yeah. pandemic was great for yep. the QR code. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic yeah, brought back the QR code but also it's been now widely used like if you go to a restaurant and they have like their yeah, tabletop to menu yeah they have the tabletop menu with just like the brand logo and stuff and then just like a big QR code where you can just scan from your phone yeah that's good so i'm just i just did the override all page options just so that i could bring my um page numbers to the front so that people can see yeah. them Yeah. Um and I also want to be able to change the colors of them. Um, Love it. I'm 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 going yeah all out with the color. <laughs> It's like <laughs> this is not going to be a boring <laughs> looking <laughs> product catalog. So I'm just going to So are you working in RGB for now? Um the so the document's set up in CMYK mm-hmm. um and then with the images what I so what I tend to do is when I'm like yeah. usually designing something in InDesign for a client like they yeah. y- usually don't know what photos they want to use so yeah. I wait until the very end and they've actually decided what photos they want to use before I um because they're all need they're usually photos like of your camera or that you've downloaded from like a stock library or anything are in mm-hmm. RGB and they'll all need mm-hmm. to be converted to CMYK but I wait till the yeah. end so that I'm not like having to you know make redo all this myself yeah. basically Absolutely. yeah yeah that makes sense so do you have any advice um for someone who wants to shift their career into graphic design that's questions from Mohammed in the chat thank you oh great question like so from something else Mm-hmm. maybe yeah i mean there's like so much free content out there um yeah that you can you know like so much that you can learn from other people and so my advice would be to like consume as much of that as possible um yep. you know there's like well stuff like this this i mean i've been watching like the adobe lives like you can pick up so much stuff from just watching other people yeah yeah like just share their process and stuff um but also there's like free courses there's um i think even just like following designers that you like online just to get like mm-hmm. tips but then there's also paid courses as well there's like yeah. i feel like another thing with the pandemic is like it's just made um learning even more accessible um absolutely there's like so many online courses and stuff i'm just going to i'm just nipping back into um illustrator to like um like get little bits that i want to use <laughs> um so like Love i it. thought these yeah. stars would be quite nice so the nice thing is is that you can just pretty much just copy, copy and paste. paste them over so Ooh, um, that does add a very fun yeah element. i thought that would make like almost <laughs> like a good um bullet point here oh yeah that is a good idea i feel like you are really great at like incorporating brand patterns and brand elements into your whole like the visual language oh, and thanks. i think that's that's like really important when you're working with branding especially. yeah 
you are branding obsessive i believe you now <laughs> <laughs> so um i know you describe yourself as graphic designer branding obsessive and gif maker um how did oh, you yeah. start making gif and like that course get your gif on tell us more about that i love that you say gif i don't i don't know what it is i always call it gif <laughs> but because it, so in the uk gif is a cleaning product uh, oh, there's like a cleaning that. brand called yep, gif i know so, that yeah <laughs> It's so funny. Um, but yeah, well, so what happened? I think I was like, I honestly believe that I was possibly the last person like mm -hmm. in the whole world to get the mm -hmm. GIF feature on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you know like where you can share them in your stories I was yeah. I was so annoyed like every sort of few months I would tag Instagram and be like hey when am I gonna get gifts um I was yeah I was really upset about it and so I, I was watching everyone like using them and I couldn't use them and then basically when I did get it I was like oh I I'm gonna like make some of my own I could I could never find like ones I wanted to use so I was yeah. like right I'm gonna make some of my own and I made some really simple white you know just like text one so hand lettered text that like wiggled around that was like my um mm -hmm. my style so I made them and then um set up so you can like set up an account so that they yeah. appear in Instagram and TikTok and everywhere so mm -hmm. I set up an account so they appeared and basically they've they ended up having like an insane number of views so I think at the moment they're at like two billion so like two billion what? uses or something like that so I was yeah. like oh this is really fun and then what happened was I, I need to remember to keep designing and not just talk <laughs> sorry um what no happened was then I got asked by you know creative mornings have you ever been to mm -hmm. creative mornings? yeah I so have, I got yeah. asked by them to um, do they in the pandemic they started doing these virtual virtual field mornings trips. yeah virtual field trips yeah yeah so yeah. I did a virtual field trip for them so this was in 2020 showing mm -hmm. how to make gifts and get them mm -hmm. uploaded onto Instagram and then yeah. basically it was it was the I think it was like the first time that I'd done something like a workshop like that. Mm -hmm. to so many it, basically there were over 300 people that turned up it was like terrifying um <laughs> but also been to really one of the virtual fun. field trips it is also yeah the they're concept, really fun yeah the concept and you're the only one talking and everyone's quiet I feel like that can be overwhelming yeah but did that <laughs> was that like sort of a kickstart into you making your own course as well that exactly it so I did the workshop and people mm -hmm. really seemed to love it and enjoy it and then yeah. a friend of mine was like Liz you need to make this into a course and so I was like yeah okay so I just made it into a course and it's like it's not, like not a very big course but it just shows people a few different ways to make gifts and then mm -hmm. um shows them how to get them uploaded and so that's um, pretty cool. yeah so that's how that happened okay so this and is then. how things are looking so far so we've got a cover mm -hmm. um yeah we've got it's all looking very bright I'm going to try and bring some more images in in a minute um mm -hmm. the next thing that I need to put in um is like the actual listings for the products yeah. so yeah. what I've done is I've got you'll see here like a pro so usually you'd have like a product code I've got the flavor and then I've got the mm -hmm. wholesale price and the retail price um probably what would be good to include um, but since this is fictional, I'm not going to, but is like a list of ingredients. So like mm. having that somewhere in there would be good. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm going to start bringing all that information in. I love that. Do you do you think you would include like the list of ingredients at a later time? Um, just not now? Yeah, I, I think that, so. Yeah. It's only because... Um, yeah, they're made up and I didn't have like a li the actual ingredients, but I think yeah. that would definitely be something that you would want to include for sure. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like a passion project, because that makes the clients um, feel that you actually know what you're doing. Yeah, I think so. Than, yeah. And it is actually experience because then you know how to um, lay it out with like the ingredient list and allergy information and all of that. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, that really kind it of is helps. good. Yeah, definitely. Love it. Interesting. Becca in the chat says, I recently learned that it's supposed to be GIF, but GIF is more widely accepted. Did not know that. I don't know oh, what's true. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> 
So I'm curious, are you, uh, can you drag stuff into InDesign as well? I know you can do that to libraries, but can you drag images from um, your desktop to InDesign? Isn't that what you were doing? Yeah. No, I haven't done that, but you can do that. Yeah, you can. Mm. I tend to like do image place. place. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the shortcut is like command uh, D. So that's what mm. I would usually do. So one yeah. of the things actually that I was going to do is um, get my stock images. This I got so many chocolate stock images. <laughs> so one like this. And then I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly um, get rid of the background so that it yeah. will sit nicely on my, because um, I've got like a background in the color. So I'm literally just going to use the, oh, what's it called? The selector tool, the magic wand. That's what it's called, isn't mm -hmm. it? And I'm just going to mm -hmm. delete these bits. Yeah. And then I'm going to save it as. Love it. Oh. And, um, to answer your question, D Bing, um, I feel like that is also because everything in InDesign is better kept as links um, when you're packaging the file as well. And to keep everything like um, editable, it's recommended that you actually place things into your file yeah. rather than just like copy pasting it. Because, yeah. Absolutely. Because you don't want it to end negative. up getting like embedded. And then yeah. that means that if you need to like, if because if I go into Photoshop now and change mm -hmm. this image, mm -hmm. um, it it'll update. I can just update it in InDesign. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you've like accidentally embedded it, then it's yeah. going to cause you issues down the line. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Right. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to copy paste the cutout, remove background. Oh, I mean mockups. I was just, here we go. Yeah. So I've got my. I've saved as a tip. Oh no, hang on, that didn't work. Let me save it as a PNG. Going back to Photoshop, love it. Yeah, yeah. going into the Photoshop, I'm just gonna- see. We are at the 60 minute mark, Liz, just a little time okay. check for you. Um, we will be, we have another one hour with Liz over here. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I know there's, um, friends on the YouTube as well. Um, so make sure to drop your questions there as well. Happy to answer. I'll try and speed up a bit. <laughs> I end up, I just end up chatting too much. So that's the problem. <laughs> I think that's part of the process though, because you're essentially chatting to us instead of just like thinking about it now because we're live. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always used to get in trouble, in trouble at school for talking too much. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> always been a problem not a problem it's a good thing well it's but. great do you think that um your personality really helps talking to clients and what would be like your top tip for someone who's just starting freelancing and they want to approach a client and how do you think they should go about it i definitely like think that um designers shouldn't be afraid to show their personality because i mm -hmm. i think that um so you know how we were talking earlier about how you're not going to be for everybody. Like one of the yeah. things that people are going to want to know when they decide whether they want to work with you is yeah. like whether they feel comfortable with you and whether like a, a big part of it, one part of it is your work, but also part of it is you. And so I think it is good to like let people know um, what you're like. And I think your personality not to yeah. say that everyone needs to have the same personality. Like I'm sure some people find me really annoying and wouldn't want to work with me. <laughs> and then other people I'll be totally the right fit for them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that um, people like I sort of spend a lot of time on Instagram and chatting on Instagram. And I definitely think that that has helped people get to know mm -hmm. me better and like feel more comfortable you know, like approaching me about work or, you know, things like that. I've had some exciting opportunities come through Instagram and I think it has helped. Um, I love that. Yeah. What about you? Do you feel like that's important for your clients to know? I do feel it's like a two way street um, for you as a designer and you as a client as well. Both of the parties need to get to know you first to build that kind of trust and loyalty towards each other that I have trust and faith in you that you would be the right designer for me and the designer would also align with the values of the client mm -hmm. so I feel like that initial meeting don't be afraid to show your personality because that really makes them make the right decision and even you as a designer 
make the right decisions. Yeah, that's such a good point. Yeah. So do you typically set up like a call with your design um clients first and then go about like getting the requirements? How does that work? Yeah, I would usually have like I guess it would be called I never call it this, but I guess it would be called a discovery call. Mm-hmm. Um so if someone's like interested in working with me, I usually yeah. get them to tell me a bit about the project first so that I can decide mm-hmm. if it's something that I would want to work on. Yeah. Um because sometimes it's quite easy to weedle out things that you mm-hmm. know just like aren't a right fit, you know, like if you don't yeah. have the same values or it's not a business yeah. that you're interested in working with. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, and then I'd have a discovery call. I'm just styling up how I so the this is like my information about each yeah. product. So I've got my product code so that it's easy for people to find or like when they receive the order they're going to get like mm-hmm. a um you know like an invoice with a breakdown that gives like yeah. all the codes so that they can work out easily what it is. So I'm going to style up one and then like normally if i was doing a massive document i would set up character styles but for this i think it would be because there's only 10 flavors it'll actually be quicker to um to use my little eyedropper trick so that's what we're going to do but i'm going to style up the first one so yeah. i'm just i'm like this i'm going to make a bit smaller I've added a bit of spacing underneath because I want the flavor to be the sort of bit of, again, it's like in within all these little sections, it's like the hierarchy. So I want the flavor to be the thing that um, stands out. So I'm going to use color to make that stand out a bit. And also because this, you know, this, <laughs> this wholesale catalog is all about the color. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to make this italic so that's going to be my style styling and so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and copy that styling for all of the other um products well um has a follow-up question about the discovery call we're talking about earlier oh yeah so um when you schedule the discovery call do you think about do you have like now in this case do you have a set of questions or a structure of what you want to talk about with your clients do you go about hey tell us more about your product or tell us more about your brand and then you go into like questionnaires do you do that over on calls how does that look like um so i usually i have sort of like a set um mm-hmm. list of questions not like written down just kind of like yeah. what i intuit like the information that i intuitively like know that i need to find out um and then i also like to explain to them my process of working so they know what to expect yeah um and then give them an opportunity to ask me any questions um yeah and basically just get as much information i don't because it's like just a d- discovery call i wouldn't normally get them to fill out the questionnaire at that point until they decided that we were going to mm-hmm. work together and i'm not mm-hmm. a very like um salesy designer so I'm always like oh here's the information no you know like I don't want anyone to feel like pressured like they need to make a decision there there and then about whether we're going to work together or anything like that um yep. so normally like I would follow up with like an email later on so that they've had mm-hmm. time to have a think about it um yeah yeah what about what about you do you have like a set um I like it, I find it fascinating hearing about how other designers do things because I know everyone does it so differently I do have a call that I should do like after getting to know a little bit about their business or what they really have already on hand because some people are just like because especially small businesses when it's like a one person business and they're just starting out they it's not necessary they have all the information so mm-hmm. you should like ideally there are situations when you have to help them find that information as well so I typically should do like a 30 minute call with them to understand what they really want and evaluate what they know just by asking the questions and it's not the same set of questions every single time i mean questionnaire sure hey what logo do you like what are your favorite colors what resonates with you if you were a brand what logo would you be mm. those are the kind of questions that i ask generally but um when it comes to specifics that really differs from the industry i'm working in so it's like if it's like a food and beverage the questions would be different if it's um something else it would be different so the industry and the brand itself 
decides what those questions are which means essentially that you have to do your research every single time so knowing about like the people you're working with and the brand they want to create let's say it's like um are you with or like a cosmetic brand and they want to make something like i don't know body shop mm-hmm. it's it's interesting to like find out before like what would be the right questions to ask by looking at other existing products in the market yeah that's that's how my process goes <laughs> i'm sorry that's there really is a long process yeah yeah <laughs> I think that's the thing isn't it there's so much that goes on behind the scenes yeah before you even get started yeah there's definitely extra effort and the initial 30 minute call is not accounted for but mm-hmm. that's essentially something that you have to like think about in terms of how long the project is going to be and think about how important it is to have that first call and like knowing if they're the right fit and you're the right fit for them. Yeah. So it's like an investment into yourself like I have a Creative Cloud subscription just because that lets me charge my clients more. I mm-hmm. am proficient in the Adobe suite. So I think that is kind of like one way to look at it. That it's like an investment in your time and in your process and in your business. So um yeah. Although uh, that doesn't mean do free work at all by any means. No. Build it into your cost. later on yeah that's such a good such a good that's such good advice such a good thing to think about do you um do you find that when you have your meeting with clients you have like a gut feeling about um whether they're a good fit for you or not sometimes yes <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like building personal relationships for me because when i'm working with clients and it's a branding project you work with them for a long time and get feedback from them and it's initially very hard to know if you're the right fit because one meeting doesn't dictate anything and it's a very short 30 minute time span to know if they're the right fit so working with them only will will help you gauge that but the gut feeling or the instinct is what drives the decisions essentially um so yeah, i would say i do have gut feelings but sometimes not all the gut feelings are what i go for do you have like a gut feeling or an instinct about the work yeah i feel like i've been honing it over time i feel like often if i think uh oh, um i'm not sure this is going to be a good fit for me those are often mm-hmm. the projects that i end up not really enjoying and like wishing yeah. i hadn't done and so it's made me it's made me realize that i should trust my gut feeling more yeah. basically yeah. um yeah yeah But i feel amazing. like i'm getting i'm yeah. getting be- better at it now <laughs> um definitely and i feel like i'm attracting attracting more of the sort of clients that i want mm-hmm. to work with if that makes sense that's great yeah that's like the dream dream yeah <laughs> my sentence ended there yeah <laughs> so is there like a dream client you wanted always wanted to work with do you have a dream client i'm not very good at thinking about this like I think I It's I'm... okay. We can you can choose to not answer and think over it no, for no. the next 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got loads of um, dream clients. Mm-hmm. Like what often happens though is um like I just sort of never think I'm like oh no that won't happen and then I don't know they'll like slide into my DMs or something and then I'll be like oh my goodness. <laughs> it's um, happening. Yeah, it's happening. And so I'm just I've just decided that because this is quite a small bit of information I'm going to move mm-hmm. it down here into a sidebar um yeah. just to put it out and as I mentioned about the flow I have realized that I want to put in one of my full bleed images here mm-hmm. so I'm just going to move all of this stuff down and I'm going to put in one of the mockups that I created yeah. um just so that like really early on they get a really good like picture of you know like what the chocolate bars look like so that they can imagine mm-hmm. um yeah like they know what to expect with what then it like breaks up the flow again as we talked about so i love then, that yeah it already looks like it's coming together i love the um mock up image that you added yeah it wor- it works out well doesn't it yeah it uh, really like brings in the colors together i love that 
Yeah, we have about 15 minutes for the artist spotlight. So okay. yeah, let's let's do this and then we can come back to the artist spotlight and then come back. I'm sorry, just a time check. <laughs> no, I need, I desperately need the time check. So thank you. <laughs> this is great. I love it. 180 gram bars. Yeah, so this definitely is gonna, be... gonna get chocolate later today. <laughs> Did you this get any packaging... yesterday? Well, I didn't, which reminds no. me that I probably should today. Yeah. <laughs> You should definitely treat yourself after looking at yeah, <laughs> chocolate, chocolate pictures <laughs> all of this time. Okay, so now I'm just going to copy all of this mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to just put it over here for my... Uh, so I've got two different sizes of bar. Yeah. So I'm just going to um, bring that over so that I can do my other ones have that we're getting there we're getting there i am we're determined doing i'm determined that i'm gonna finish it on time you're I'm... really quick at this i feel like we'd probably be done before time not to jinx it <laughs> <laughs> why yeah why would you say that <laughs> no i'm kidding I just Who, mean that you are really quick at this and I'm, <laughs> I love that. No. I'm just fascinated by it. Who is your, um, have you got a dream client that you'd love to work with? I do want to do editorial illustrations. <gasps> so, nice. Um, yes. I'm, I don't think I'm the best at like, um, doing editorial illustrations, illustration or something, but it, editorials are something else. Mm. you know they have that kind of value to it in the sense of like you just look at it and can tell that it's editorial work mm -hmm. and so I do want to do like an article for New York Times or maybe like a book cover for the New Yorker and Amazing. those are like my dream clients or even like something like um there's this Adobe Live host called Kieran and he does he's based out of the UK as well I know. I, I just met him the other yeah. day. Yeah, he um, yeah. I, he um, he, followed me the other day, and I followed him. And he's just done a book cover for Craig yeah. David. Yeah, Amazing. and he works a lot with the Penguin Random House. And yeah, I would say that that's also one of my dream clients. I have a lot of dream clients. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think I have. Yeah, I have got a lot of dream clients. Yeah. I think a lot of mine are like le because I mainly work with really like small businesses. A lot of them are like less mm -hmm. well known. Like one yeah. of my fa favorites recently. So I'm a little bit of a um, like you know, like a paper planner. A pa I love stationery. I love planners. Yeah. Like yeah. as much as I love like doing stuff digitally, like I really still love pen and paper and writing things down. And so mm -hmm. I discovered this like paper planner company. Um, yeah. called the circle planner and I was like mm -hmm. this is it I after years and years I found my perfect planner I love using it every year I get excited about getting my next one and all this kind of stuff and then she messaged me and was like Liz I need wow. help with my branding and so like it's not a huge it, you know it's not like Penguin Random mm -hmm. House or anything mm -hmm. but she was a total dream client for me because I was like well I already love your product yeah. um, like she was an absolute dream to work with it was like a really nice nice fit so that was really fun yeah I feel like that is those are like the special moments and the highlights mm. in your freelance journey where you like think about things that happen organically and you just like align because you're yeah. already using those products and you love them so yeah. like getting to work on something that you use on every single day is very special I yeah. know yeah it felt really nice I love it Okay, so I've got all of my product listings in. So because I'm like just, you know, starting out in business, there's I've only got um, 10 flavors at the moment and two different sizes of bars, but I put in my little blurb that I'm planning to grow it to 50 flavors. So I think that's another thing to mention is that like you can be a really small business and not have loads of products and it's still worth like spending time putting like putting together a really like nice wholesale catalog yeah. um so yeah so I'm gonna get in another one of my full bleed images so I'm just gonna move this over here love it Val in the chat says I worked with pending penguin wow I said that wrong 
<laughs> for a good penguin random house for the first time this year was one of my dream chants as well yeah oh, that amazing. is amazing while in the chat who's moderating for us today is also an amazing illustrator and artist designer freelancer um very good at what she does so yeah really love that love to hear it mm-hmm. yeah i think like illustrators i love like um well not to give too much away but what our artist spotlight in a bit is an illustrator and Ooh, i really what? love her work <laughs> yeah i love her work as well i find that is like who the sort of creatives that i'm like drawn to mm-hmm. is like illustrators i think because i just like yeah, yeah would love to be able to do that more mm-hmm. i love it anyone's got any like in design questions feel free to um yeah let us know yeah let viola us know. in the chat just joined us viola is a huge fan of InDesign, so i'm glad you're here viola hi welcome <laughs> on in it is yeah it is my favorite tool to use um no, what I so is gonna... this how your workflow looks like um with illustrator in design in every project or how does that work no i think it does vary slightly um from project to project i think cuz mm-hmm. like with indesign you know like designing a poster for example would be yeah. so different from like so I used to do um I used to work in-house at university and they had like quite big magazines that they used to do Mm -hmm. so I used to work Mm -hmm. on those um and like the process of like for that would be really different from like say yeah like a poster a poster for a campaign or something like that so it it does vary um I'm just gonna put like a little footer here basically so that it says on every page what um are we on the parent page yeah so I've just gone back to the parent page Mm -hmm. um and I'm also going to add the website on the parent page as well um so that you know like if people are flicking through and they suddenly think yep that's I need to go and order right now like they don't have Mm -hmm. to wait until they're on the particular page they can um yeah, just like a photo information for every yeah. page. So um, have you already copied all the information from like the pages app? Is Are we just going to be in InDesign now? Yeah, I've just got the contact information, which is going to go at the end mm-hmm. to bring in. But I think nice. most of it is there. Love it. Ooh. I love looking at all of this process um, just because it's so fun to see like another designer do something that you already know how to do. And then it's like those little things that are different. And then you're like, oh, I should have done that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I reckon it's the other way around. You're probably like, oh, she should have done it like this. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true at all. No, um, um, I appreciate your workflow as well. And I um, work in InDesign lesser than I work in Illustrator. So I definitely think that there's always, there's always something to learn, no matter what skill level you are. How long have you been um, doing this for people Um, watching in the chat? Like, and how did you find out that you wanted to be a designer? Ah, that's a good, that's a great question. Um, I, so I knew that I wanted to do. I love that little circle the I added with like the chocolate in the back oh uh, yeah nice touch yeah bringing in sorry like... go ahead yeah <laughs> um I always knew that I wanted to do like sort of arts so I was like studied art school that was the thing that mm-hmm. I loved I was like always mm-hmm. drawing always taking photos like doing all of that kind of thing yeah um but basically I don't know if this if they do this in other places but I did an art foundation course yeah um and it's basically a year where you get to just try um out all sorts of different things so I don't even think I really totally knew what graphic design was until um I went and did that course um so I originally thought I was going to be a photographer so at school I really liked photography um Mm -hmm. it was still when people were like 
developing their own photos so I would spend hours like in a dark it basically in a cupboard in our school yeah. developing my own yeah. photos um and I like really thought that that was what I was going to do but then I got to art college and realized that if I did design it would like basically incorporate all of the things I loved you know like illustration photography mm. like I might not be taking the photographs but I would be like laying them out in my designs and you know all that kind of stuff yeah um and I just loved like the variety and I just kind of fell in love with it there so I went and studied it at university um yeah and have loved it ever since basically I love that yeah I think that those are the moments that actually you realize that this is what you love just by doing it mhm yeah totally yeah. what about you because you had quite a um like different sort of path into design didn't you yeah i am an engineer by formal training and i feel like that really helps with like different aspects of design and art mm-hmm. because the way that i think is um a very analytical sort of point of view and when i think it things and i think that also plays into me trying to be organized with everything because that's just how my mind works yeah and um when Not i got into <laughs> yeah so when i first no, got in yeah I, no, it's just um there i first got into like painting i started acrylic painting and then that just like kick started everything else because i couldn't believe that it looked so pretty <laughs> no and i was like oh maybe i can do this so i pursued it even more and further along um learned all the ruby software software so once i'm self taught there were definitely youtube university and a lot of adobe lives also lately that um kind of help you learn and so yeah that and also a lot of courses online that you can take so a lot of learning um reading listening to talks and just like diving into the software is what kind of helped me amazing i mean if is it something that that you're really passionate about and you really want to learn you just like learn it without having like any sort of external discipline and you just bring that your own discipline and that's what freelancers i think probably need the most in their life is discipline and to like constantly keep upskilling yourself mm. just to like be on top of things i feel like that really helps with everything else i mean if you do that and if you continue to do that there is not a lot that you cannot do yeah that's that's really cool i love it are we doing the final touches with like placement and layout now yeah so i'm just doing the contact page at the back and i'm just like feeding some of these elements from the designs like through yeah so that there's like a certain you know like consistency running all the way through the document um Yeah, so this is how it's looking at the moment. So we've got our front cover about the brand, the brand values, like the information about ordering and shipping. Then we've got a nice big mock-up. So obviously in an ideal world, this would be in a non-fictional world, this would be product photography that you'd had. And I think also product photography with people is really good. So that would be mm-hmm. um something there. And then we've got um about a little bit blurb about the products and where I'm planning to take it then we've got the product listings um for the 180 gram bars and the 55 gram bars and then we've got the contact information here and then I'm going to have another full bleed image there and then I've got my yeah. back cover which is like the chocolate that feeds over from there and then hopefully that will take us up to the artist spotlight and then after that we can just have a quick um whiz through of getting it all ready for print um yeah Absolutely. and then I think we're good to go yeah. so I are think... you going to finish like this page before we jump into the artist spotlight yeah i'll just finish this page i'm just going to nice. put in a picture of someone eating chocolate so that we've got um it's a bit cheesy <laughs> but again like you in for a real brand like you would do a photo shoot mm-hmm. and you'd get mm-hmm. pictures of like people eating your products and stuff which would be awesome but i'm just going to bring in a few of these oh oh yeah i'm going to bring in a few of these star elements over the picture just to like bring it all together and then is it time it is almost time but we can go a little okay. bit past if you're still working okay. on something yeah just one one minute and then i think mm-hmm. i'll have it all love that yeah 
look at you i told you i'm just so impressed by your <laughs> ability to like add all the branding elements everywhere it's just mind blowing to me i love it right <laughs> shall okay. we hop over yeah it is artist spotlight time so we highlight a creative from the community and this time today we have sophie potter hey sophie um if you're watching live or on replay hi thank you for <laughs> sending in your work and creating this beautiful work um and putting it out there in the world do you want to maybe look at some of their work um let's see where are they based out of so sophie. i actually know sophie so she's mm-hmm. based in cardiff um she's yeah. an amazing illustrator and the reason i picked her for the artist spotlight is i did a workshop with her the other day so she works in mainly in gouache and i did I, oh this is another word where i don't know how gouache. everyone says it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone says it differently gouache yeah. wash whatever wash. um yeah. Yeah, and it was just a really amazing workshop. So this is like, a she does really beautiful murals. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I think she does so well is she's so consistent, like she puts color palettes together really beautifully and she's really consistent yeah. like with her color palettes. Um, yeah. So you can, you can just see it like feed through, mm-hmm. um, yeah, all her illustrations. I just think that they're really it. like, fun and friendly like this I love this book cover design I think it's wow yeah I love it as well I love the little details in the hair and like Mm -hmm. the bird that bird looks so fun and the ribbon in the hair as well yeah tying it all together and just like the shading tying it all together I see what you did there (laughs) I love um, all of these. I agree with you about the colors. They also say that they're a freelance illustrator and artist creating bold, colorful, and joyful illustrations mm-hmm. for brands, packaging, editorial, and more. Yeah, um, make sure to give Sophie a follow both on Instagram and Behance if you want to look at more such um, work in aesthetic aesthetic colors in your feed. I love that. Can we le- take a look at the little, um, I think that's a packaging, the illustration. This um, one? Right, yeah. So this is actually for a chocolate company that's based near me called Cocoa nice. Therapy. And she and she created the illustrations for these um, boxes. That looks really fun. It's really fun, isn't it? Look at their chocolates. How amazing Look at the are textures. Those. Like the, their chocolates are an, a work of art in themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is but so yeah, pretty. I love I it. Think and it kind of does justice to like the colors um look like they were almost color picked from the real chocolates mm. you know? yeah i think they work together really well i think that's yeah. fun. i think this is really beautiful as well yeah the shell on earth packaging mm-hmm. yeah. i love the textures i love that the the use of textures in their work is so fun yeah i love it i could just wow i love it and the, at- and a little like the touch of like handwritten text at the bottom mm-hmm. is also really really cool i love it yeah, yeah. really nice um and let's this take a look another... at the mural yeah, yeah I this was is another say. <laughs> so this is another mural that she did recently with um mm-hmm. another illustrator from cardiff called matt joyce mm-hmm. who actually designed he so my podcast cover is a illustration of me and he did the illustration for my yeah. podcast cover um but yeah nice. i just think this so this is for like a creative i think it's for yeah, it's for like a um, an art center that's in Cardiff where I live. And so they did this mural and it's in like lots of different sections. I think mm-hmm. it took about a week for the two of them to paint it all. That's um, it? it? Just a week? Well, the, <laughs> yeah, there was like two of them doing it. But um, I think it was a week. I, they were sharing it on that's Instagram amazing. as they went. But it, what's yeah. nice is it's like combined both of their illustrations. So it's like mm-hmm. a really nice like collaborative project yeah so this is like sort of matt joyce's um illustration style uh, and then you've got yeah. like sophie's and they do work together really well yeah and i can't so, tell yeah. that this is like two people doing it just because they work so well together I'm yeah that. and because they've got like their consistent color palette going all the mm-hmm. way through it works really nicely but yeah it's a really fun project i need to go and see it in person <laughs> absolutely yeah show us pictures when you do there's also card designs i think it's the next project and i really love those because cards are something that's like art licensing is definitely something that Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't think about but the cards over here these i love these designs are these like new designs it's a spring 2022 yeah these are new ones i bought this one for mother's day (laughs) i love that yeah Um, 
they're also different but still so cohesive i think that's my favorite part about this style of illustration um sophie you do a great job if you're watching this right now i know yeah you're amazing sophie <laughs> yeah it's really beautiful uh, the cat is so cute i love it <laughs> she's really um inspired by japan as well so like mm-hmm. i think she spent quite a lot of um time in japan so you'll see here there's like a tokyo illustrated map so yeah. there's like lots of lots of the still life paintings that she does has like mm-hmm. um she's got like lots of things that she's collected from japan and she she paints those and um yeah they're Love really it. cute I do love how organic it is. Alana also loves it. Val in the chat also showing some love. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> What are those scissors? The project with the scissors. Yeah. This one. Oh, so this is a really beautiful magazine in the UK called Molly Makes. Um mm-hmm. and so this is some ed- an editorial piece that she did to go along an article about crafting in nature. I that I really so love the um fun Yeah, it yeah. Lo- it almost because of the like shadow it looks like it's all cut out from paper which I'm sure is the effect that she was going for with the scissors. Yeah. But it works I love, so well. I love yeah. this paper cut out effect. It's brilliant. It's really and nice. the fact that like the hands and the feet are like not colored in and the this is just outline works really well together and like the small nuances like the paper at the bottom like bits and pieces you know that are just like cut out when you do paper craft. Yeah. It's so yeah. fun. The little it's- details I love it. <laughs> and the texture like on the leaves, yeah. uh, on the leaves and the petals. Yeah. I think she's got like you know how people talk about finding mm-hmm. your style. I feel like she's yeah. done a really good job of finding her style. You know like it's different depending on what client she's working mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. Um but she's got a really distinct a really distinct style that um Absolutely. works really well. There's This a good book as well. as well. What's the good book? Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at both of those. Wow. So I think this is yeah, beautiful. This is so unique like showing how the colors really work. Um I feel like some people really have that inherent quality of like just looking at a face and then just painting colors and colors, stuff. yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's definitely like a skill all in its own, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Just being able to really um nice look at color and just, yeah, yeah just like no sort of instinctively know like what works well yeah. together like yeah. which colors to highlight mm-hmm. um yeah definitely i love it yeah let's look and, at another one and then we can hop back into our work i think this is another editorial yeah so this is for bloom magazine showing which flowers open and close at different times of the day oh, oh wow so i love that cool. concept mhm That is so cool. Yeah, and yeah. then the shape of the clock is also like a flower. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I think that's what I like most about their illustration style is like the thought that goes behind creating these and these are very well thought out and very well thumbnailed and then just created with like brilliant color. What? Yeah, really really So, um amazing. Yeah. I love it. This is super inspiring to see. I love to see all the colors in their work as well. Um there is contact information um at the end of every project which I really love adding call to action is the best thing ever that you can mm-hmm. do as a freelance creator or just as a creative in general or just as someone on the internet. Let people contact yeah. you. So yeah. make sure to go to Sophie's Behance. It is in the chat. It is also behance.net/sophiepotter. Make sure to go to Sophie's Behance and give her a follow, and also her Instagram. That would be great. And if you want to work with them or say hi, there's also their um, email ID in the projects that you can look at. Yeah. Go But, commission Sophie. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And if you are someone who wants to nominate your work or an an artist that really inspires you, make sure to go to the artist spotlight tab right above chat. It's right next to the info panel on top. Make sure to click that and put in the links so that we can highlight you or another creative in a future artist spotlight. But let's dive in. Um, let's go back to your screen, Liz, and let's see what we were doing up until now, and then continue on. Amazing. So um, one thing that I just spotted is that because I updated my um, like parent pages but I'd mm. overrided um some of these like bits of information haven't come through so I'm just going to put those on the pages and then what I'm going to do is get this ready for print um mm-hmm. so let me just put these 
in so now i've got the like that the um website is there so it's easy for people to get there and then i've got a few of it like really big so that people know um yeah where to find all of that i'm gonna put a little thing on the back just like with a little maybe like a fun little message just saying um we'd love to hear from you or something like you know like another little last call to action yeah love it i think what's fun is because this is like um a fictional project i can like mm -hmm. you know like i can write fun copy for you know like i'm not a copywriter yeah. but it's quite nice to be able to like not just get copy from a client and be like oh mm -hmm. i can have a little play around with this <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i was just like looking for like chocolate puns and there was a very fun one i knew you would <laughs> truffle when you walked in <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one yeah i feel like with my passion projects i do tend to like put in some of that just because like it resonates with a lot of the target audience and then they're like oh this is fun let's pick this up <laughs> right the other thing that i'm going to do is there's a bit of a gap here and so i'm going to put in one of my um like chocolate facts so i'm just gonna span mm -hmm. it along here yeah i'm gonna make a colored colored box and I'm gonna go um op uh, object corner options and mm -hmm. I'm just gonna give it some nice rounded corners Love it. just to sort of fit in with the font the softness of like the font and the logo um and then I'm gonna just get one of my facts about chocolate let's do it What's your, what would you say your favorite flavor of chocolate is? What are you going to go out and buy after this? <laughs> There's too many to list. Um, <laughs> but I think a classic would be like a dark chocolate with sea salt. Mm -hmm. Something that I always go to because it's like a safe option. <laughs> you no, can it's be not good. go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Um, I have got a bar of white chocolate with raspberry bits in it mm -hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna nice. treat myself to that after this even Obviously. though it's probably a bit late to be chocolate, but why rush. yeah yes just before bed <laughs> but i think i deserve it <laughs> absolutely yeah nice okay so, so are there any um i know we were talking about projects earlier do you have any most do you have like a most favorite project that you've worked on recently oh that is such a mean question. <laughs> um, or, oh, that, let me think. I mean, all of them are favorites, but like one that you worked on um, possibly for a longer duration, maybe a shorter duration, but also like just enjoy the process five minutes more than the other ones. Let's just say that. <laughs> Um, I think the one that I was talking about earlier for, mm -hmm. um, the planner company, I really enjoyed working on that. Um, yeah, I think cause it was already like a brand that I really knew and love. And mm -hmm. so it like, yeah, it just felt so easy to design for them. I feel like I really like understood her brief and had like quite a good instinct for, um, yeah. like how she wanted it to feel. I love it. Okay, so I've added like a little, the little sort of monogram logo on the back. I think it's, you know, what you mentioned, just having those sort of like branded elements, like repeated yeah. all the way through. And I think yeah. that's a good way of, um, yeah, just sort of like helping people become really familiar with the brand and um, just like reinforcing all of that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to package the file so when mm -hmm. you're sending again this is going to be slightly different I think in different countries um yeah. but when you're send, so a lot of the printers in the UK will want a high-res pdf um yeah. with crop and bleed marks yeah. um I got into the habit of what like when I worked 
in an agency and when I worked in house, I would always like package my file before mm -hmm. sending it to print because the printers would like, um, it just meant I didn't have to like outline all the fonts because they'd have yeah. everything packaged in there, all of the images. Yeah. If, yeah. if they, if like, I had a like one tiny amend they could go in mm -hmm. and they could just make the amend for me um so it just made it a little bit easier so that's what I still do now so I'm just gonna go it's just a case of like packaging mm -hmm. um and then basically it gives you a summary so you'll see here it tells you like how many links have been found um, yeah. five of them are using RGB so I'm gonna need to go in and fix that um it's like set up for CMYK. So this is where it tells you if you were using Pantone colors, but I'm not using any Pantone colors. Yeah. Um, one of the things I meant to mention at the beginning is that because I chose to do an A5 landscape, if I mm -hmm. was getting this printed with a digital printers, some of them wouldn't necessarily have the right size printer because obviously yeah. it's quite wide. Um, so actually, probably because it's a5 it'd just be about okay but you just would need to like check with the printer like for often digital printers are smaller than like lithographic printers um mm -hmm. so yeah just those are a few things it's great if you can build up a relationship with a printer where you can just like get yeah. to know them get to know their process anyway so um yeah so i haven't used any pantone um colors but they would appear there you can like yeah. check that all the fonts are like activated and in there mm. and everything check mm. that all the links are okay and the other good thing is like so not all some of my images are already cmyk some of yeah. them are rgb but i can go in and find out exactly which ones are rgb mm -hmm. um it tells me like what page they're on and everything um yeah so basically i'm just gonna hit package um save before <laughs> i do that <laughs> and then i'm just gonna save this folder to my desktop mm. So I know we talked about like some images being RGB and some being CMYK. Do you convert the RGB to CMYK or does the document yeah. mode change it? How does that work? Um, so I'm going to go and convert it. So if I, what this is why I find it helpful to package the folder because basically mm -hmm. now it's given me a links folder. And so all it's yeah. collected all of the images that I've used and it's put them yeah. in there. Um, yeah. And what I want to do then is make sure that all of my images are CMYK and 300 dots per inch. So I want to make mm -hmm. sure that they're good quality. Now, the mm -hmm. good thing is that all of the stock images um, are really high res. So they are yeah. um, 300 DPI already. This one I'd already changed. So basically when you go in, if you just go image um, mode and it'll mm -hmm. be on RGB and you literally just click it on to CMYK. And then if you go into image size, um, this is where you're gonna adjust the image size. But th thankfully all of the stock images are 300 DPI already. So we're good to go. So what nice. I would, I'm not gonna do it cause it'll take a while, but what I would do mm -hmm. is I would go through and I would just change all of the images. Um, yeah. Let's do one. I think this one's probably um, RGB. So we'll go in and we will um, just go mode and just change it to CMYK. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see there it's like 32. So you just have yeah. to make sure that you've got it set on. So I haven't got it set right. Hang on. I just, um, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to save that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then what you need to do so when i packaged the file um yeah. it's automatically made a pdf for me but it hasn't mm -hmm. done it with crops and bleeds so what i'm yeah. going to do now is i'm going to open the packaged in it in design file mm -hmm. um and then i'm going to go to links and then yeah. it's going to basically um i think it should be wanting to update Oh, I think maybe it's, oh, I think it updated it when I opened the file, but yeah. basically it will have updated the images. So now if I was to go into package, it should mm -hmm. say one less. Yeah. So now it just says for use RGB because I converted one of them. So yeah. you can just go yeah. and check all of that is right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save another PDF. So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go for, hang on, let me just check file i'm gonna do it from export mm -hmm. i'm gonna save it as a pdf print yeah decide where i want to save it um 
And then what I'm going to do is just check that I've got my marks and bleeds on. Um, yeah. You can click all printer's marks. I tend to just click uh, crops and bleed. Mm -hmm. um, again, you can sort of check with your printer what they'll want, but most of the time they're happy with just crops and bleed. Um, yeah. I didn't use any slug area, so I don't need to click that, but I need to make sure that this is ticked so that I'm using mm -hmm. my document bleed settings. And mm -hmm. you'll, I didn't mention this when I was doing it, but you'll notice that all of the images, I made sure that all of the images went right to the re bleed, the edge of the bleed. Yeah. So this is just for when they're like trimming it down. And then I'm just going to click export. Yeah. And it's just saved it here or it's saving it here at the moment. And then when we open it, you'll see... Um, that it's got the bleed the marks and, oh, and it's done it yeah. single pages so you can just see where it goes over into the mm -hmm. other um i tend to send it over to the printers as single pages that's what they seem to yeah. prefer but you can also save it as spreads as well and again like if you build up a relationship with a printer then they can give you all of the information that Absolutely. you need yeah for that that's so, essentially yeah. why you don't need a slug area because yeah you yeah have, you have a relationship with a printer and you don't need to put any job notes or like notes, any other information yeah, yeah. totally um and it yeah, is yeah, yeah it's really nice to have it, it like that was one of the things that I really loved in my last job when I worked in-house it's mm -hmm. like having that relationship with a printer yeah. where you know them really well you can just ring them up and ask them questions they're there to help you um and yeah like get some times you can get like proof so that you can check it's all looking how you want it like it's great to mm -hmm. be able to see that the images are looking like really crisp and looking really bright and all that kind of thing and yeah. also sometimes um i would definitely recommend like even if you don't get this from a printer printing out yourself having printed proofs um yep. so that you often like you will want to proofread it and doing it on a bit of paper rather than on a screen is so much easier and you'll also spot things um that you haven't like spotted on screen um, mm -hmm. So like, for example, I have just spotted that this one doesn't have a full stop at the end, which like isn't consistent with the others. And also yeah. it's got one word on a line on its own, which isn't doesn't look very nice. So like yeah. that's called a widow. So you would just like there's all yeah. these sort of like little typesetting things. So you mm -hmm. potentially like knock that one down. A lot of these yeah. things are like easier to see when you're looking at it printed out. Um, and mm -hmm. I used to spend hours like going through and circling widows and like big documents yeah. and then going back and widows and orphans. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing, like the other thing that like handy tool in InDesign is like mm -hmm. find and replace. Um, yeah. So if you go into where is it? I, I'm going to not be able to find it now. Um, it's totally fine. It's okay. Oh, here we go. Um, Find and change. We... Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you can just search for a word. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a word, say I'd like spelt color in the English, in the sort of like UK way of spelling it and the client yeah. wanted it to be the American way, then I could just go through mm -hmm. and quickly change them all. So that's a really handy thing you can do in InDesign. That's a great example too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. it. Um, we are almost at the end here. So Liz, why don't you give us a quick recap? Um, just a quick brief run through of both day one and day two for anyone who might have missed the streams. Okay, cool. Um, so we started off in Illustrator. We mm -hmm. um, started thinking about our fictional chocolate brand, Boca Chop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hang on. I just lost my hidden uh, boards. So <laughs> we just had some information about the branding. We created the color palette. We went for something that used the sort of like traditional chocolate colors, but then with really bright colors alongside it so that we had yeah. lots of flexibility. Then we worked on the logo. Um, this was the final one that we decided to go for, but we played around with a few different options, looked at different fonts. These were like the sketches that I'd done. And then once we were happy with the logo, um, we like, I saved it in different colors. We've got it set up in the library uh, with all the color palette as well. And then we went over and created some patterns. So like mm -hmm. the idea being that there would be a different pattern for each flavor using sort of like a little subset of the color palette. So we've got one for strawberries and cream, one for pretzel and peanut, and one for um, popcorn and marshmallow. Um, nice. And then we went over and put those into packaging and played around with what those would look like. And this is what we, where we got to at the end of day yeah. one. And that was like the 
one that I did after the live mm-hmm. stream just to catch things up. And then on Loving. day two, we popped into Photoshop, created some mock-ups, um, which are... Let's on... look at the catalog um, because we are sort yeah, of in short, short out of time. time. So yeah. then we created the product catalog. So mm. This is a wholesale catalog for the brand um, mm-hmm. where we had like the products listed with the information that you needed about them. Um, products like information to help people get to know the brand, fall in love with the brand. And then we chatted through how you would send this to print. I love that. Yeah, that is a very uh, good depth and insight into your workflow and the creative process. Thank you, Liz, so much for showing us how you work through making a logo, finding the colors, finding the right typography, packaging, product catalogs, mock-ups. What? We covered (laughs) a lot of it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the process. Thank you so much for joining us here on Adobe Live. Um, Where can people follow you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Liz M Mosley and mm-hmm. on TikTok at Liz M M Mosley. <laughs> so there's like an extra <laughs> M in there. Um, or yeah. you can check out my website, which is lizmosley.net. And you can check out my podcast, which if you Google Liz Mosley and building your brand and you'll find it. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, thank you, you all in chat. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stick around for the XZ Creative Challenge with challenge with Howard Pinsky up next and tomorrow we have a full day of Adobe Live Masterclasses so make sure to tune in for those followed by a very fun Office Hours episode with Nick Longo and Andrea Hawkardle but um, for today I will say bye for now and have a good day folks bye bye